Hi, welcome to the Justice German Lee Jr. Nature Sanctuary. Today I'm very honored to share with you our conservation story. It's about how we're able to thrive with mangroves and the value of uh, small private conservation initiatives. We here at the sanctuary started off as a family farm. Uh, our parents bought this property around 25 years ago and this was a place where we came just to relax and um, enjoy our weekends. But over the years, we have learned more about our environment and lately, the past two years, since our um, enrollment with the ZSL's training of trainers for mangroves and beach forest conservation, we have dedicated this place from a place of relaxation to a place of learning and conservation. So. I will share with you how our story has unfolded. We are actually a small, privately funded conservation initiative. We have here a four hectare property that sits on the edge of an old growth mangrove forest. And the front of our property is, a, is the mangrove area and in the back is a lowland forest. But this was not what it is today. About 25 years ago, this was an abandoned, the front was an abandoned fish pond and the back was an abandoned cornfield. So when we acquired the property, it was literally dead. And over the years, we have reforested the back of the property and uh, at the front of the property, we have allowed the fish ponds to be converted into a mangrove wild zone area. What is the value of small conservation initiatives? It actually enables private landowners to experience the beauty of nature and land stewardship. First of all, it's privately funded so there's no need to wait for funding because people could use the property as their own private residence or a small business. Second, like in our case, we are all run by volunteers. Nobody gets paid and everybody is intrinsically motivated. So our volunteers here start with my mother, my brother, our friends, our uh, linkages. So each individual volunteer brings with them their linkages, whether it's institutional, personal, organizational, or business-wise. And it enables each individual to share his or her individual talents. So what happens in a private conservation initiative is that there is a pooling of resources and a pooling of different talents. So there's a synergy of diverse passion that is concentrated on conservation efforts. What is at the core of our conservation efforts? We believe that the principle of utilitarian ecology is what's causing all the destruction in our environment. Instead, we believe in the symbiotic relationship between humans and mangroves. And in order to forward that belief, the foundation of our efforts is really the permaculture ethics of care, which is the care for the planet. So in our case here, the care for the mangroves. Second is the care for each other, for the people who come here, the volunteers who share their talents and their resources, so we have to care for each other. And most of all, we're doing all of this because we care for the future, for the future generation, because the mangroves have so much to give to the coming generations. What is the value of mangroves here at our property? First off, we treat mangroves as a part of an interconnected and complex ecosystem. Here at the property, we are so fortunate that we actually have three types of ecosystems. First is the marine ecosystem at the front of our property, where it has seagrass and a mangrove forest. And then in the middle of our property, we have a freshwater ecosystem because we have a pond. And we also have a lowland forest made up of a food forest and a, a beach forest.
We also work with mangroves, not as a backdrop of a tourism site or as a recreation area, but we work with mangroves basically as our core teacher. Mangroves teach us a lot about nature, about outdoor education, and sustainability education. The people who come and visit our sanctuary learn from the mangroves directly. We are mere guides using science-based protocols to highlight what the mangroves are there to teach us. We also work with mangroves as healers themselves. Most of our volunteers that come here work in the field of psychology and social work. And young people who have been traumatized or have gone through very difficult circumstances come to the mangroves and um, consider this place as a sacred green space where there's the possibility of healing. They always say that nature is the greatest healer. Well, it is true. That's what we do here at the sanctuary. Give people space to be with the mangroves and heal. I would like to cite five very important contributions that mangroves provide for humans. First, it provides a coastal green belt, which is a combination of a mangrove forest and a beach forest. It gives us protection against typhoons and other disasters. Second, it provides a habitat for biodiversity. Here at the sanctuary, there are numerous birds, insects, crabs, fish that come and have this space as their sanctuary. It's not just a sanctuary for humans, but also for animals. Third, the mangroves provide food for the different animals that come, including humans. We here at the sanctuary love to eat the land crabs, or in the dialect, it's called kaga. We cook a very delicious local delicacy enjoyed by many um, people who live in the mangrove areas. Next, we use mangroves as a way of erosion control. As you can see in this area, we have used it to um, prevent the destruction of the walkways and it's also in our inner ponds we use it to control the erosion of the, the ponds and lastly mangroves have a very good aesthetic value mangroves and beach forests actually can be used for landscaping and developing your property so that it is attuned to the context in which your property is in so you don't bring in all this exotic trees and exotic plants for landscaping but you work with what is already in the environment in our case here we uh, do an observation of what grows in the area and we just propagate the seeds that fall from these plants so far we have talked about the contribution of mangroves to humans how about us humans what have we contributed to mangroves first of all our major contribution is really the dedication of the property for nature stewardship. In our case, this property used to be an abandoned fish pond. So the, the first thing we did was really to allow mangroves to be what it is, which is to thrive. So from a fish pond, we allowed it to be converted into a mangrove wild zone. And how did we do this? by restoring tidal flow. Because when ponds are made, they actually create dikes that destroy tidal flow. So what we did was just to look at where are the cracks in the dike, and that's the natural tidal flow. Over the years, the ponds have been populated by mangroves. So we have eight species of mangrove that thrived in our, what used to be a uh, fish pond. The second contribution we did was to actually live at the edge of the mangrove area. So we built our house just in the inner side of the property because by actually inhabiting the area, we were able to prevent two major things. First is we were able to prevent the cutting of mangroves because the neighbors previously used to harvest firewood and animal fodder in our property. And since we moved in, they have refrained 
from actually cutting our mangroves. And second, there has been a reduction in the hunting of birds. Before, we used to see a lot of people with air rifles. However, since we moved in, there has been a reduction in this because if the property is inhabited, people do not want to cross the area. The third thing we did for the mangroves was really to learn about them. So when we heard about this um, training of trainers for mangrove and beach forest conservation by the Zoological Society of London here in the Philippines, we were so excited that finally we were going to have first-hand experience from the scientists about mangroves. So after graduation, we excitedly came back to the sanctuary and first of all, we did an inventory of what are the mangroves in our area. So we learned as much as we could about mangroves. So we identified them, we did an inventory, what grows here, and we looked at the, the animals that grow, the insects, the crabs, the birds. So we were so excited because finally we were learning about it in a systematic manner. It was no longer a hit and miss, although we were observing the property over the years but now we could do it correctly like we learned about it and then when we were confident because we had all the the protocols and all the manuals the field guides so after learning we shared it with our friends and there over the years we've have we've had so many organizations and young people who came to the property and now we had institutional partners and we shared with them using the ZSL protocols So that is our story. So what is there? What would you like to gather from what we shared today? First of all, um, it is really giving property owners the opportunity, the great honor of actually using their property for conservation and to take care of the next generation. We have to work together to refute the utilitarian model of ecology and mangroves have so much to teach us. Second, I would like to emphasize the role of um, using your sphere of influence, not just in terms of resources, but in terms of passions, because it is our passion that will really push us forward to, towards conservation. We have to use our skills and our talents in all our conservation efforts. And I suggest that you link up with like-minded people who are in the field of conservation. And most of all, like what we did, we have been working in conservation, but we have not worked directly with scientists. So I encourage you to actually, you know, work with ZSL, get trained in mangrove conservation or beach forest conservation, because these are the people who have worked with mangroves all their lives. And we can learn so much from them and in turn we go home to our properties and convert them into areas for conservation and for sharing with the community what we have learned just like mangroves you know mangroves have all these seeds and we are the little seeds and then when they fall they fall to the ground and they grow up to become different mangroves or some of us will float and drift and we will go to different areas and we will settle in the muddy areas so we are the seedlings and then we can grow up to be either a big avicennia or a lanky bacow you know we can be the kind of mangroves that we can be there's so many species and you could be any of those species